Today I am going to turn this chunk of cadmium metal into a few different paints. Before I start, keep in mind that cadmium and its salts are toxic, so do not attempt this yourself. To begin, I add concentrated hydrochloric acid to the cadmium. This will slowly dissolve it into cadmium chloride. This must be done under a fume hood as cadmium aerosols can be produced by this process. After a day, the cadmium has dissolved a lot, and I go ahead and filter off the cadmium chloride I have so far. While that's filtering, I make a very strong sodium hydroxide solution. I put this on a hot plate with stirring and add 10 grams of pure sulfur. Over time the sulfur dissolves in the hot sodium hydroxide to form sodium polysulfides. I let this continue heating until the solution is clear and very dark. Now that I've made my sodium sulfide solution, I transfer some cadmium chloride to a small Erlenmeyer flask. To this I will add my sodium sulfide solution to precipitate cadmium sulfide, which is the pigment cadmium yellow. This pigment cannot stabilize in acidic conditions and will mostly exist as a white liquid until pH reaches 7. That said, I'll just keep adding my basic sulfur solution until it neutralizes, then I'll wait. Note that this reaction will produce toxic hydrogen sulfide gas and must be done under a fume hood. Hydrogen sulfide is easily identified by its characteristic rotten egg smell. Cadmium orange and red are cadmium sulfoselenide in different proportions. To make those colors I have poured some of the white soluble cadmium sulfide from my last step into another beaker and add a few grams of sodium selenide. When stirring is turned on you can see chunks of sulfur displaced by this reaction. This is stirred until all of the white sodium selenide has completely dissolved. At that point I add some more of the sodium sulfide to neutralize the solution and precipitate cadmium red. While cadmium yellow is made at room temperature, cadmium red needs high heat to form. I recommend 90 C. Eventually the cadmium red forms chunks that rise to the surface. These particles are much larger than the yellow ones. When I check back in on my cadmium yellow, it seems to have all reacted and is nearly ready to filter. I transfer this solution to a large beaker along with some distilled water to help wash away any unreacted cadmium. I try to pass this through a vacuum filter, but the particles are so small that the process is miserably slow. After a minute of this I just switch to gravity filtration. Due to the very large particles the cadmium red on the other hand filters just fine. Once this is done I rinse both pigments several times in HCl, hydroxide, and water to remove any impurities. At this point the pigment is stabilized, and after drying I crushed it in a mortar with linseed oil to demonstrate its use as a paint. Keep in mind I'm not an artist, and the cadmium red is still grainy and would need a muller to reach a proper consistency. In any case, that's the whole process. Follow for more, and stay to the end to see examples of classical paintings that use these pigments.